I am driving this car with my mind, which is some of the coolest stuff I've said in a while. And today, I'm gonna show you what in the world is that thing I'm wearing, how I made it, and how you can do the same thing and have actual telekinesis. So let's get right into it! So this all started when I first saw these devices, like Elon Musk's Neuralink chip, which allowed people to interact with stuff using only their brain. Like, we can now give ourselves telekinesis thanks to technology, how cool is that? Of course, I wanted to get my hands on one of those, but let's see, how much is a Neuralink? Oh, oh, plus the, pl plus the brain surgery, how about one of these EEG thingies? Okay, let's just make our own. So, how does one go about measuring the brain? Well, to figure that out, we first need to know a bit about how it works. Don't worry, I know this is not my science channel, so I'll keep it brief and simple. Basically, neurons in the brain communicate by pumping ions, i.e. charged atoms, through their membranes. And for various reasons, they sometimes become synchronized and begin firing in an oscillating pattern. When so many ions are being pumped at the same time, we can detect their accumulated charge from the surface, no blazing the brain with wires required. And the cool thing is, each frequency band of these oscillations has different causes and arises at different situations, meaning that we can kind of know what the brain is doing in there by measuring these surface charges with electrodes. For example, alpha waves are produced when relaxing, while gamma waves are associated with focus. This is what an EEG scan does. It uses electrodes placed all around your head to measure these brain waves in different regions. However, all we really need for our purpose is a single electrode and a way to process the signals. So I got one of the cheapest brainwave chips out there, which is also quite well documented, the TGAM ASIC with its real electrode. And once it arrived, it looked like this. Not only was that very cumbersome to wear, but if I was gonna dev, I was gonna dev in style. So I immediately designed this mind control circlet, which is cooler than anything you've seen before, and that's a fact. And what do you know? The crystal glows in the dark! I inserted the chip, electrode and battery box in their slots, placed some padding on the inside for comfort, an elastic band to fix it to my head, and now we're talking. The first thing I wanted to try was to train my brain by controlling a driving game with it. I could start because this should only require 4 keybinds, and that meant I needed to associate each key with a value. Looking at the TGA Amazing docs, I had a bunch to choose from. I thought the logical thing would be to link concentration with going forward. To do this, I could have chosen to measure maybe gamma waves, but the ASIC produces a value specifically called attention, which it derives from different frequencies, so I thought that would be better. As for churning, I thought using the blink strength value would be cool, using my blinks to decide if I wanted to go left or right. However, it turns out no Think Gear hardware produces that value. So if someone could enlighten me as to why it even exists, that would be nice. So I needed a plan B. And then I remembered Stranger Things. T -t Trust me, it's relevant. So you know how Eleven has telekinesis and sometimes breaks people's necks with a mere head tilt? Yeah, that. That's cool as heck, I might use that. If I tilt my head to one side, my car will turn accordingly. So with the idea sorted out, it was time to get coding. First I needed the library to interface with my TGA Amazic data, and there's one called NeuroPy which does just that. I had to modify the source code for some reason as it imported the thread library wrong, but whatever. Next I needed a way to actually measure the angle at which my head was tilted. My first bit was OpenCV, a very complete deep computer vision library, with the classic face and eye hard cascades, basically AI models trained to recognize the location of, well, faces and eyes respectively, on an image. What I'd do was take the location of both my eyes and kind of calculate the angle of a line drawn between them. However, I ran into some problems because these models are a bit outdated so they struggled with my glasses and even when I took them off, they were trained on straight faces, meaning that as soon as I tilted my head, it stopped detecting my eyes, which is not very convenient for my purpose. So I decided to go with a more advanced type of model, a face landmarker. Instead of just detecting a feature, 
these models map a face into a mesh, assigning a point to each individual feature. After some research, my best options seem to be Google's MediaPipe model, which produces a whopping 468 different points to map each feature of your face. Finally, I need a library to actually press my keys. The most popular one is PyAuto GUI. However, if I wanted to make sure it worked with games, which usually have some kind of bot or macro protection, I was better off using PyDirect input, which is based on PyAuto GUI. So this is the code I came up with. Wanna know how I called it? Brainwashed. Get it? I mean, that is the absolute best name I have ever come up with in, like, my entire life. Anyway, let me give you a quick rundown. So here we just import all the libraries. As you can see, NeuroPy has to be imported weird because it, I don't know, it feels special. Then we just initialize NeuroPy with the Bluetooth serial port. We initialize MediaPipe and get the face mesh I mentioned earlier with some standard parameters. We start the video capture with my laptop's webcam. And then here in this loop, we get each frame from my laptop's camera feed. However, these frames are in BGR format, so we turn it into RGB and then we pass them through MediaPipe. Then, if we detect the landmarks from the face mesh, we store the X and Y coordinates of landmarks 130 and 359, which correspond to like the very outer edges of the eye, like in, at, at the very edge, but in the, in the center, so we can get the longest line possible for better accuracy. However, these coordinates are like kind of raw. They're from 0 to 1. So I multiply them by my camera's resolution to get the absolute coordinates in pixels. And once I have that, I pass the difference between the right and left eye coordinates through this 8 and 2 function, which basically just gives me the angle with respect to the horizontal. However, it gives it to me in radians, so I turn it into degrees. Now. With this, I say if the angle is more than 15, so if my head is tilted more than 15 degrees to the left, I press A, so the left key. Otherwise, I lift A. And if the angle is less than minus 15, so if my head is tilted more than 15 degrees to the right, I press the D key, the right key. And then for nearby, I added this condition, this poor signal condition, because if there's bad contact between the electrode and my forehead, I'm not gonna get any values or I'm just gonna get nonsense. And luckily, the ASIC chip can detect when there's poor signal. So if there is poor signal, it just tells you to wear the circlet correctly. Um, yeah, and otherwise, uh, if the attention value is more than 60, it'll go forward, it'll press W, otherwise it won't. And if it's less than 30, if I get too distracted, I will actually go backward. Yeah. So attention basically goes from 0 to 100. So 30 and 60 are probably good thresholds. And if that's not the case, I can just modify them later. But they'll probably be fine. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Especially me. Let's drive. This is actually really cool, because it takes real mental effort to get your attention to the threshold to move the car. Well, and because of the fact that I'm literally using telekinesis to drive my car. Yeah, that's also cool as heck to think about. But you know what's even cooler than driving with your mind? Flying with your mind. And by replacing A and D with camera movement keys, I can play first-person games. For example, here we could say I'm mind-wandering around the back rooms.
Of course, there are many other values to choose from, and I'd probably be able to control more complex stuff with this. It'd also be cool to try to control physical objects using activators, or maybe even some kind of robot. So yeah, I'll definitely keep fiddling around with this, and if I come up with a good system or any of you decide to share a good idea, I might make a part two. Now, before I end the video, I just wanted to thank you all so much for everything you've done for this channel. I had already recorded the robot video when the bracelet one, you know, exploded, so I wasn't able to address this, but wow! I mean, I had 40 subscribers three weeks ago, and now we're over 25,000! Some people even visited my coffee page and made incredibly generous donations. And actually, a few days ago, YouTube finally monetized me. This means I'll have a bit more budget now to make even crazier stuff. Honestly, this is a dream come true for me, and I seriously can't thank you all enough. I might not upload in a while, because I'm gonna have my exams now, and I also wanted to focus on my robot, but I do have some awesome project ideas in the oven. So, until next time! <laughs>